Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I am your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. As always, go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Snag your free study guide on the top 200 drugs. Great resource for those out in clinical practice. Great refresher that way. Uh, If you're going through school, I try to highlight some of the most important, relevant real-world principles as well as a lot of those things that might show up on pharmacology exams and board exams. So, again, go get that for free, reallifepharmacology.com. Let's get into the drug of the day today, and that is sucralfate. Uh, Brand name in this medication is Carafate, which I'll probably use that name interchangeably here. Uh, This is a GI medication, gastrointestinal uh, agent Uh, I've seen it used in management of uh, stomach ulcers, uh, GI symptoms associated with GERD, esophagitis. Those are the the two primary situations where this med's going to be used. Mechanistically, how does it help maybe relieve some of those symptoms of esophagitis, for example? So this drug actually forms a coating in the lining of the stomach and GI tract. And it does this by binding positively charged proteins. And ultimately, this coating protects the lining of the stomach from stomach acid, which is generally what we try to think about when we're thinking about esophagitis. Think about some of our other agents that I've covered, uh, maybe a, a famotidine or a uh, you know protonix, omeprazole, those meds. Uh, they seek to reduce the production of stomach acid. Sucrophate, carophate, works to kind of protect the lining of the stomach, of the GI tract, from that acid. Okay. Uh, on the dosage form side of things, uh, there is a suspension and a tablet. So this, as you could imagine, has to be an oral medication, all right? We can't give this medication IV because it needs to be in the stomach and creating uh, kind of that protective layer there. Why isn't this medication used more often? Um, I will say I do see it occasionally. It is dosed four times a day and that's what's typically needs to be done um, to prevent some of those symptoms from esophagitis or an ulcer, kind of that burning type sensation. So four times a day dosing, that is a major issue. And when I get to drug interactions, I'll talk about that's the other kind of major thing that really limits the use of sucrophate. Adverse effect profile. So the major adverse effect that you could possibly see with this medication is constipation, okay? That's the number one adverse effect I've heard patients complain about with carophate. Uh, Secondly, uh, the the other thing I wanted to mention was, uh, particularly with the suspension, uh, this contains a significant amount of sugar, and for patients that, you know, maybe have brittle diabetes, pretty sensitive to additional sugar intake, uh, can definitely raise their blood sugar to a significant extent. And think about it, you got to take it four times a day as well. So uh, that's definitely something to educate and warn your patients about. Again, particularly those taking the suspension where there's kind of added sugar within that. Uh, pharmacokinetics, let's touch on that briefly. So understanding that this needs to be dosed four times a day, it's probably got a fairly quick onset and a fairly quick offset of action. And indeed, onset of action with sucrophate, uh, probably in the ballpark of, of one to two hours. Okay. So again, we're going to work relatively quickly and maybe helping some of those uh, GI type symptoms. Uh, but it also works its way through the body and, and gets out of there quickly as well. And again, that goes back to the negative of the uh, four times daily dosing. Understanding that this medication is not significantly absorbed, uh, that 
lends towards a pretty low risk of adverse effects, or at least adverse effects not in the GI tract. Remember I mentioned constipation, and then having the additive sugar with the suspension, those are, you know, that sugar can be absorbed, obviously, uh, systemically. Um, but in general, the, the drug itself is not going to be significantly absorbed into systemic circulation. So that minimizes risks of, you know, central nervous system side effects or any other side effects for that matter, where it requires systemic circulation. Okay. Uh, one other point I also wanted to make is uh, I have seen this medication used uh, here and there at least in uh, pregnancy. So again, minimal systemic absorption, that's definitely a, a good thing, and it's got a fairly good safety profile in pregnancy, and, and that's probably due uh, to that kinetic fact that it really doesn't have a, a ton of systemic absorption. All right, so I'm going to take a quick break from our sponsor here, and then we'll wrap up with drug interaction, which is one of the major downsides uh, to using sucralfate. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like BCPS, ambulatory care, geriatrics, psychiatric exam, or the BCMTMS exam, go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. We've got a growing list of resources there uh, for practicing pharmacists who are looking to take board exams, as well as pharmacy students looking to take board exams like NAPLEX content. So again, all those links met at 101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. If you're in the market for other study materials or potentially just looking to beef up your clinical practice, your clinical knowledge, uh, we've got books on case studies, drug interactions, and you can get your first Audible book for free through audible.com. So if you've never done Audible, never tried an audio book, uh, this is a great way. Uh, follow the links at meded101.com slash store. And you can get your first book uh, for free on audible.com. So again, go check that out. Uh, follow the links and um, find that at meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. All right, finishing up on drug interactions. So starting again, going back to the kinetics, understanding we don't have a lot of systemic absorption, we're not going to have to worry about SIP enzyme interactions and things like that. Understanding that this drug stays in the gut for the most part, what's the issue going to be? The issue is going to be with absorption of other drugs. So coating the lining of the stomach and the GI tract, uh, we're going to have issues with binding and absorption of other drugs. So in general, um, and, and different drugs can have different recommendations, um, but in general, take medications two hours before or four to six hours after taking sucrophate. Now, again, like I mentioned, with, with a four times a day drug, that gets to be a major issue and maybe even impossible in some situations. Other than maybe if you took the, the drug you're looking at, maybe right away in the morning, wait a couple hours, and then maybe take your, your sucrophate. So um, binding interactions are a major, major issue. So what drugs are particularly noteworthy? So when I see sucrophate, I usually look it up and do a, a drug interaction screen just to make sure I'm, I'm not missing something. Um, but I'll give you some highlights of what I think are some of the, the most important ones. So bisphosphonates, that's definitely a no-brainer. There's lots of meds that can bind up bisphosphonates. Uh, so that's a drug like alendronate for osteoporosis. Uh, digoxin concentrations can be lowered. There's numerous HIV medications. So essentially reducing the systemic concentrations of an HIV med that could increase the risk for HIV treatment failure. So that's definitely something very, very concerning. So again, very careful with sucrophate. Uh, synthroid, levothyroxine, that can be bound up and cause variations, significant fluctuations in TSH. Uh, many, many vitamins 
can be bound up by sucrophate. So you're essentially um, wasting your money if you take a vitamin at the same time, or certain vitamins anyway, um, at the same time as sucrophate. Uh, quinolone antibiotics. That's the last thing we want if we're treating an infection. Uh, we definitely want the drug to get to the site of action and be absorbed. And if you're taking sucrophate with your quinolone antibiotic, you're not going to get the absorption on levofloxacin, ciprofloxacin that you want. Uh, another antibiotic, tetracyclines. So your tetracycline, doxycycline, sucrophate is going to bind those drugs up and it's going to prevent absorption. So you're going to run the risk of treatment failure and, and not you know, covering that infection and treating that infection, infection adequately. And lastly, I wanted to mention warfarin, of course. So sucrophate can bind up warfarin, obviously going to make the INR go down if we don't have adequate warfarin absorption. So if sucrophate needs to be started, needs to be used uh, for a patient taking warfarin, um, definitely we've we've got to check and monitor INRs a little bit closely and, of course, pay attention uh, to the timing of that warfarin and when we're giving it in comparison to sucrophate. So, again, the drug interaction reason, the binding up of many, many other drugs, and the four times a day dosing, um, those are the huge downsides of sucrophate and, again, why you don't see it a ton in practice. But, Occasionally, I still do come across it. There are patients that have tried it, used it, and, and they've had some success with it in managing, you know, maybe their symptoms of GERD and that type of thing. Uh, but those are the, the two big downsides. All right, so that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you picked up some practice pearls. Leave us a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Um, share us via email, social media friends and colleagues and students uh, that need some pharmacology education. Uh, we've grown beyond my wildest uh, expectations just simply uh, because of you guys doing the grassroots work and simply doing a quick share of the podcast with those that might benefit or enjoy it. As always, go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Subscribe. Get that free top 200 study guide. Uh, it's a no-brainer. Just going to cost you an email. And if you've got comments, suggestions, reach out to me at mededucation101 at gmail.com uh, or you can track me down on LinkedIn, which is the social media platform I'm generally most active on. All right. Well, I hope you picked something up today. Uh, thank you so much for listening and you hope, I hope you have a good rest of your day.